Well, good morning, everybody. Looks like my camera might be a little dirty. Let me see if my, uh, my shirt will clean it off sufficiently. Hang on. All right, let's just see how that works for us. So, uh, good morning. We're here for today's close-up, and I'm starting downstairs here with Calendar. Cal, hi, Cal. And uh, her remaining two kittens that are here, that's uh, Holiday or Holly out there in the cat run. And we just saw Monday or Monkey, hey, buddy, right here behind me. Oh, sorry. Hi. Oh, what are you saying? That's what I thought you said. He's a big complainer. Like, if I pick him up, he's always got to complain about it. Um, but he still is a big snuggler, too, and a big, big softy. What? I'm just illustrating. What? Hi. You like a squeaky toy? Yeah, hi, okay. Okay, there you go, bud. So, it's worth mentioning, uh, the reason I'm starting here with Calendar and her two kittens is that all three of them still need to find their adopters. Um, that would be uh, this little guy, Monkey, Monday, and his sister, Holiday, and their mom, Cal, wherever she just went. Custard's right here, too, by the way. Trying to nap and ignore us all. Hi, bud. Okay. You're a big guy. Custard does not need an adopter. Um, and uh, I guess what I would say about um, adopting the three of these kittens <clears throat> is that uh, they go... Oh, uh, Teaspoon's here, too. Hey, buddy. What is that all about, huh? Hi. So, um... What I would say about adopting the three of them is they're all, they're all wonderful, fun uh, kittens. All th three of them are kittens, even the mom. Uh, and I'll, I'll try to do a little bit to describe uh, personalities. But what I would say is uh, Monday and Cal would make an excellent pair, uh, both for the adopter and, uh, and for them. Um, I think that Monday and Holly would also be a good pair. And that uh, Cal and Holly would be just slightly less of a great pair. They are getting along better and better every day. They just tried to play with each other and it ended up with a little bit of hissing, but there was that attempt to play. So uh, that seems like it's huge progress to me. I think they're doing very well and I think uh, it wouldn't be very long at all before they could get to be good friends again, which we've been slowly working on. Uh, so that's that. Uh, I would, I just, I want to uh, point out about Cal. So first off, if you haven't seen her like super playful, uh, she does get incredibly playful. She just zooms around and wrestles and uh, you can see she's feeling a little hyper right now, but she's not, I don't, I don't expect she's really going to show it off for us, maybe. Um, but that's not all that there is to Cal. Uh, she also is an extremely cute snuggler. She just loves attention. She loves nothing more than like uh, to cuddle up for some lap time and watch TV. Or um, the last few nights, I've been coming in here with her to spend time with her and uh, sitting on the beanbag chair and playing my video games. And she will climb right up in my lap and just snuggle and want to snuggle. And, and she's she's so good at at it too because she wants to roll around and have you pet her belly like she's a real interactive snuggler sometimes so it's it's super fun to sit around and, and play the games and have her right there so she's really good on on all counts and her kittens are shaping up to be the same way as far as the kittens go uh just a you know like a quick description i would say that holiday is the one that is the more like she wants to be around i know it's, it doesn't seem that way because she's the one outside watching the birds right now but she wants to be around people all the time. She's really, really demanding of attention. Her adopter's probably gonna have to have a lot of time for her. Whereas Monday here is just a little bit more independent and uh, more willing to kind of go off and do his own thing a lot of the time. Um, those are generalizations though. They're both kittens with a lot of range. And uh, look at this, he's lining up to attack her as soon as she comes in. That door should help. Oh, Cal's wrestling the tunnel now. Uh, we just had a changing of the guard here. Holly came in and uh, Monkey went out. What, Holly? 
Well, yeah, I was just telling everybody about you. No, I was. Okay. I, 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 she's less likely to complain if I pick her up, although she probably will just to prove that I'm wrong about everything. No? All right. No complaints. Uh, all right, so that's that. I wanted to start with these kids, but I know what you're waiting for is to see the little kittens upstairs and their mom cats, and we need to go up there and check them each and weigh them. So I think that's a good thing for us to do together. If you want to keep watching Cal and see who wins the fight between her and this tunnel... Um, you can tune into the regular Kitten Academy live stream. I think some of this is visible on there right now, or should be anyway, because it's, uh, there's some fun stuff going on down here. But uh, let's head up there. I don't want to forget I have my coffee and my, uh, my bowl of breakfast here, so I'm going to pick those up before we go. Oh, coffee. And we're going to leave all these guys here. I trust Cal is going to be okay, even though... Um, like I said, she and Holly are still working things out, but they're doing fine enough. And uh, she goes, she's kind of growly at teaspoon once in a while too, but I think they've kind of figured it out now. So I feel all right at least leaving her here. She's not going to get aggressive. She's not, she's never been a, a very aggressive cat. She just, uh, she just hisses and kind of tries to have these boundaries sometimes. She's all right. So I'm going to leave my stuff here. And let's go upstairs and check in on everybody. Hang on, I'm gonna hand sanitize. Not that I think uh, I necessarily need it at this point, but uh, there we go. Makes me feel a little cleaner. Oh, and while I'm gathering that, let me grab this. I have the tripod right here. That way I can uh, set you guys down and we can watch the kittens while I weigh them. So, hi, Skye. Skye has been coming out of the room more often now. She really likes to come out and look around. And she's met most of the faculty and she's fine with them. She is just a one cool kitten. She just, uh, nothing ruffles her feathers. She hasn't even got any feathers. That's how unruffled she is. Uh, so she's very friendly with everybody. She does hiss, you know, like most cats do. She wants to have those boundaries and uh, she doesn't know you yet, you know, as another cat. She will hiss and tell them to stay away. But as long as they're respectful, she's not starting anything. And uh, she's actually got uh, a much smaller, um, like, distance that she needs to maintain than a lot of mom cats, too. She'll let other cats come right up to her before she starts to be like, okay, okay, back off. So... She's pretty good that way. Now, if you guys have been watching the regular stream, we've all seen this mouse. It's a very controversial bed. Uh, I think that it is like cute and, and well, admittedly a very creepy way. Hi, buddy. It's, uh, it's cursed, I guess. It's a cursed mouse bed, but it's, uh, it's also a very, very nice bed for them to be sitting in, no matter how creepy it might be. If you just ignore the fact that it is some sort of freaky dead mouse uh, bed, uh, it's very, very nice. It's well constructed, probably going to last a long time, and the kittens love it, so that's what counts. I discovered last night it's even got teeth. I didn't, I didn't know that at first <laughs> under here, so extra creepy. Um, but uh, here we are. We're here for the kittens, so let's do that. Actually, I, I want to put this on the tripod even if I don't need it, so let's do that to start with. Okay, hang on. Okay, good. That's a good start. Nice handle on things. Okay, now we got to weigh these kittens, and I see already I probably am going to need the tripod because Joyce has an eye stuck shut. That's been a common theme. Um, as I was just mentioning on chat on the Discord, um, hello. Uh, Sky has had this upper respiratory infection, the slash eye infection, since the minute that she arrived here. And everybody else has gotten it, including all of the faculty. And uh, I think that's why her kitten's eyes are a little bit more likely to get stuck shut than the others, but they all seem pretty well for it. Oh, sit right there. This is, uh, this is Joyce. She is the smallest kitten, literally the smallest kitten ever born here. Today she weighs 11 Point four ounces, eleven point four ounces. That's a pretty good weight, I think. Um, now I want to just clean her eye real quick. Uh, 
Hang on, I'm gonna have to do that myself. Let's point this camera at something uh, that you guys can see while I try to... Hi. This is Alcove, the girl. Uh oh, I think mom's about to knock the camera over. She's rubbing on it. She has got, when I sit in here, Sky, when I sit in here with Sky, she has got to rub her cheek on everything like she's doing on the camera right now. Um, in fact, it's kind of caused some issues when I'm syringe feeding her kittens. Uh, she'll come up and, and butt her head directly on the back of the syringe and like so hard that it pushes the plunger on the syringe, ends up squirting milk, like blasting milk into her kittens, <laughs> which is a, you know, it's a slight problem actually. Uh, so I try to, try to avoid that, but uh, yeah, she's just super affectionate that way. She wants to rub up on everything. Hi, Sky. She's trying right now. She's, now she's rubbing on my knee. I'm describing all this. It'd be so much better if I could show, not tell, right? Uh, but uh, still trying to get this eye clean here. Buddy, how you doing? Let me see. Doing it the way my dad did my hair when I was a kid. Licking his thumb and like putting it in my hair. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I had hair when I was a kid. Believe it or not, I was not, I was not bald my entire life. Just the important parts. Okay. <laughs> all right, how's that? A little better? Yeah, you'll get that all the way open soon. All right, so that's little joist. Let's double check that weight now that you got your eye open. Little joist is, yep, 11.4, all adorable. Definitely gonna be a long-haired kitten. This floof is extremely floofy. Here's her mom. Hi, Sky. Okay. Okay, hi. That's a lot of talking you're doing. Okay, go back over here. You can go hide in your mouse. This is... Oh, uh, this is the floofiest kitten ever. No neck. Uh, this is Alcove, the girl, who is the biggest one in the class. Probably not the biggest one ever, but the biggest one in this group. And today weighs 16.8 ounces. Sit back here where we can see your cute little face for one second. Can we do that? Here. Hi, Alcove. Look at us, though. Look at us. We're where the fun is. Oh, we're where the fun is. It's hard to hold up a head with that much floof, isn't it? Isn't it? Hi, Joyce is also over here yelling at me. That's what all that noise is. All right, sit in my lap. So this is Alcove. Here, this is the biggest and the smallest right next to each other. That's got to be a fun comparison. Oh, oh, we got some zooms. Look at that. Look at that little waddle. <laughs> So cute. I know. What are you saying to me? What are you saying? No, that's not you. <laughs> that's Alcove. Alcove, hi. What are you saying? Are you too floofy? Look. <laughs> so that's Alcove is a girl, and this is uh, Joyce is a girl, and I'm trying to get them to stand next to each other for one second so you can see this difference. They were born the same day, uh, but a vast difference in size. <laughs> okay, well, I tried. Oh, uh. All right, we've got two more kittens, though, in Skye's group to weigh, so we should probably carry on with that. Well, Skye tries to headbutt everything in the room. Now she's on the scratcher. She just wants so much love all the time. She constantly goes to the door to look out whenever she thinks I might be walking by. It's, it's adorable. She's a big sweetie. All right, I don't think that she is gonna be a long hair like the kittens, but she is gonna be like a medium hair because she's definitely longer than a short hair and her fur is so thick. Like she's got a lot of thick fur, great coat on her. You two are being very noisy. All right, now we gotta go into the mouse and retrieve the other kittens. Wish me luck, guys. Oh, the curse. All right, come on, in here. That eye thing, that's a really clever idea. Some designer should have won so many awards for this thing, even if it is creepy. It's it's very clever in a lot of ways. I, I, what is it? What is it? Hi, you got some more yelling to do? Okay, settle down. You can't steal the whole show. We got away everybody. So this is another girl. This is Rafter. Hi, Rafter. Okay, you're gonna sit now on the scale. Oh, we're gonna probably have to turn it on. We're gonna have to get your mom out of the way because she insists all the time. Okay, let's set this down for one second so I can manipulate you and maybe we can get kind of a similar view on you. 
All right, right there. This is Rafter, the girl. Rafter weighs 14.8 ounces today, 14.8. Rafter, hi, you are much calmer than these two are today, huh? I don't know where Alpo went, but I can hear her. Look at you being a cutie posing for the camera, mugging. Hi, hi, oh, watching my fingers. You got cute little blue eyes. All kittens have blue eyes when they start, and then after a while, they transition to whatever color they're gonna have as adults. So that's why their eyes are blue. I wouldn't expect them to stay that way because mom's eyes are kind of a hazily green. All right, now the one boy in this class is uh, um, Rafter's near twin. This is the boy um, uh, who's Gable, Gabe. I've been calling him Gable. And uh, I can't get his weight by himself until I take her off, but I thought you'd want to see him next to each other so you can see how to tell them apart. So this is, uh, sit right here, guys. You're being very good at posing for this camera right now. Hey, pay attention to me, though. Okay, don't back off. All right, too much. We tried. So the girl, Rafter, just basically the easy way to tell them apart is that she has an asymmetrical face, whereas his is more uh, just a little bit of white in the middle, and it's even symmetrical, right? So Gabe, Gable, and uh, Rafter, the girl, boy. There you go. Here, let's put the rest of you guys on here, too, while we're having fun line you up for a class photo real quick. I don't have another thing to take a photo with, but hey. <laughs> Kittens, pay attention. They're too young to know about that. Look, right here. right here. Well, we tried. That's the group, including mom's group backside, the good end. <laughs> All right, let's go back. We still got to weigh Gabe. We still got to weigh you, Gabe. I know, I know. It doesn't count until we can weigh you by yourself. Okay, right on there. 14.6 today, 14.6 for him. There we go, little Gabe. So that's Skye and her kittens. Now um, they are going for their first vet checkup. I think I scheduled it. I wanted to say it was like the 8th of April. It's, it's in mid, the first week of April at any rate, or roughly the first week of April, uh, April, March, April, May, May. May is what I meant, this is April. Is it? Oh my goodness, what is wrong with me? So the first week of May then, uh, ish, uh, maybe the 8th, uh, is when they're going to go for their first visit. And I remember that's about a week after when they would normally go at uh, seven weeks. They would normally go at six, but that was the earliest we could get them scheduled in with Dr. K. And, you know, it's not, it's not like urgent to get them in exactly at six. So that, okay, thank you, Megalina. It's, yes, it is May 8th. Thank you. May 8th is when they are going to go for their first visit. And like I said, that's closer to seven weeks than six on their age when we get there. Uh, I don't know what the math is on it today. Probably close to four. Um, hi, I know. Okay. So there we have it. All right. Now we need to go next door and see Cuddles and her kittens. So let's do that. Well, Sky decides to settle down and nurse these kids. What a good mom you are. <clears throat> oh, four weeks tomorrow. Perfect. Uh, thank you very much, uh, <clears throat> Alana. So these guys are almost four weeks old. That means the guys next door are four weeks old yesterday, doesn't it? We're doing the math right on that. So uh, yeah, my apologies for the cursed mouse, but it is, it's a great bed. They love it, I love it. Um, so I guess we'll see what we can do um, to sort of learn to accept it for what it is. Uh, you know, that's a, it's a good lesson for all of us to, to be able to accept people for their qualities regardless of their appearance. Something I've been asking people to do for me for a long time. <laughs> Me and that mouse, we really got something going on together there. Uh, all right, uh, I've got the tripod on this, so I can't comfortably set it down there. I'm gonna put it on the floor and hand sanitize. Now is the time that it's kind of important. I don't want, um, I don't want Cuddles cats to start getting gummy eyes and, and the upper respiratory and the sneezies, but I'm pretty sure that ship's already sailed. Um, it's, it's inevitable, they're right next door to each other and these things spread no matter what you do. And this one in particular is, 
very uh, strong. It's, I mean, strong it isn't good at spreading, not strong as in severe consequences. It's actually not that bad. Um, but everybody gets it, even the faculty, which is rare. So that these guys will have it in some degree is inevitable. Hi, Cuddles. Now, Cuddles isn't used to me filming and talking a lot, and she has uh, um, been doing great at adjusting to life at the Kitten Academy and being a friend of mine, but I am acting funny. Hi. She has been calling me, and she's opened up a whole new vocabulary in the last few days where, you know, when we first met, it was all hisses and spitting and slapping. Uh, but now she's actually talking to me, like full-on conversations. She uses a whole bunch of different kinds of meows, like a real cat. And, in fact, um, she likes to uh, even wait for me, like at the door. And as soon as I come in, she jumps up and she wants to tell me all about her day. And it's just fantastic. She's, she's becoming like a real good, um, a, like a real friendly cat for me. Of course, she still does have her problem getting over, you know, whatever it is that she's got um, in her uh, in her little mind there, where sometimes she just kind of wants to smack somebody, and she does, but she's very, even when she does, she's very nice about it. She doesn't use her claws, she's not trying to hurt me, and a lot of times she'll do it, and then she'll be like, oh my goodness, I can't believe I just did that. Uh, so you can tell that she, she wants to try to kind of get over it, and she probably never will entirely get over it. But I do think that with enough time, she could actually be a really good companion cat for somebody that likes to snuggle and maybe lap time even. I mean, she loves being petted. You can pet her for hours, and that's what she wants more than anything. But if you don't do it exactly the right way, it can also kind of um, make her very, very nervous right now. I've been working on it. She gets better every day. I think there's a strong possibility that by the time she is ready to be adopted, um, she won't even be nervous about things like me standing over her to pet her. That's one of the things that she gets to be very uh, nervous about is if you're standing over her. Uh, but she puts up with it exceedingly well, considering how nervous you know that it's got to make her. So uh, this is Cuddles, again, is her name. There we go. And her four kittens are, I guess, four weeks old yesterday. And I did clear this little door so that they could watch each other. We can probably see sky right there nursing her kids and i've noticed that cuddles does look through sometimes and seems unbothered so i think they can be friends i'd, I'd like to see them sort of co-parenting um but i'm waiting for um her to go and get her first vet visit and sort of checked out by the vet even though she's been quarantined here with her kittens for long enough that i think she's gonna be okay um i'd rather have them uh, go in and uh I'd rather have her go in and, and get her snap test and just, just have a once over by the vet first and then they can start kind of, we can start working on getting them to meet. So I think, um, I think Pat just said it's the 22nd. Yeah, and it's just cuddles. It's not the whole group. The whole group is going in actually the same day. Uh, Skies and cuddles kids are all going in for their first checkup the same day on the 8th. But we've got her scheduled, I think it's next week is the 22nd. Uh, she's going to go in early for that checkup, and that way we might be able to get her and the other uh, starting to get introduced. So that's exciting. That's exciting for me. should be exciting for her, but she has no idea. And you can see she's got kind of her irritated face on, but I'm, I'm doing that sort of deliberately. I think it's important to push her boundaries just a little bit. So... Uh, Steph, why is there tape over the portal? This is the lock for the portal, and it's very loose. If you touch it, it can unlock. I would hate for that to happen. And uh, someone on chat said, "Why don't you put some? Uh, why don't you put some tape on it? And then, uh, then they won't be able to accidentally unlock it." And I thought, "Ooh, that makes too much sense." So it does make too much sense. All right, here's our scale for this room. Let's start. Well, let's make sure we got some level ground there. Okay, let's weigh some babies. So, I know, unstable. You're not unstable now. We're all good. Good. Okay. So, we got four kids in this class as well. And I've got one in my lap right now. Now, these guys have, um, well, hang on. Uh, this is um, uh, names, 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 names. Hot chocolate. Okay. So, here comes hot chocolate. Hot chocolate weighs 16.3. 
Someone on Discord suggested, and I think maybe also here on YouTube suggested that I call her Coco, since I was trying to find something that's easy to say as a nickname for her. I really like Coco as a name for that. It's easy to say. It's cute. She doesn't really strike me as a Coco, but I don't care. Uh, I think it's a good name. So that's probably what I'm going to try calling her. But, um, but whatever. This is hot chocolate. And the thing I was going to mention is that this whole class, um, including mom to some degree, has been having some poop issues. They're just now learning to poop and use the litter box. And so this room uh, has been full of poops, uh, stray poops in the wrong places. And I think you're going to see some of that on the regular stream, like it or not. It's just going to happen. So um, plan on that. I see one right now that's out of place. You guys can't see it because it's way back there. But uh, yeah, it's stuff for me to clean up constantly in here. So 20.7, this one is uh, the girl uh, uh, pajamas. Her name is pajamas. I've been calling her PJ. But uh, pajamas, jammies, whatever, that's her. And I want to put her next to her brother so you can see them together like we did in the other room. Because they're kind of twinsies too. <sighs> so this is her brother. Uh, this is cashmere or cash. Uh, cashmere, oh, right there, okay. Cashmere weighs 20.8. And if we put them next to each other, you're going to see they are very, very twinsy, aren't they? It's even harder to tell apart than uh, Rafter and Gable. But this is uh, pajamas and um, cashmere. And the only way that I tell them apart most of the time is I just look at their back feet. Because if you look at their back feet, the boy, cashmere, there you go. And if you look at the girl, pajamas, there you go. Pajamas has some white toes and... Uh, Cashmere, not so much. So that's the easy way. And even that, I know, not always so easy, considering you can't always see them, but that's the deal for now. When they get a little bit bigger, maybe we'll think about putting some collars on them. This is pajamas again. I'm just going to put her there so she can walk off one more time. So that's pajamas. You say pajamas or pajamas? All right. Uh, let's see. And then this is... Her brother Gable one more time. Oh, here, turn this way, and then you can walk away to Mom. All right, there's one more kitten hiding in this room. That is uh, Marshmallow, who's right here in the unicorn bed. All right, let's check you out. You're looking real good. You got a little something on your belly, though. Let me take that. What is this? You got some food or something stuck in there? Maybe. Sorry, you guys can't see that. I'm just fussing with Marshmallow here. So this is Marshmallow. Marshmallow is all black, weighs 17.4, and is a boy. So, uh, there you go. Marsh, I've been calling him Marsh because Marsh is a boy's name, uh, and I think that works pretty well for him. Uh, I was going to say something else. I was going to look, check him over real quick for any white spots because I've, I've been kind of wishy-washy on whether there are any. When he was a newborn kitten, you could see a little white spot on his neck, and you can see a little white spot by his uh, uh, his belly, but both of those are almost impossible to see now that he has uh, gotten a little bit bigger. You can't really see those white spots at all, like the one on his neck, basically invisible. You can tell there maybe there used to be one there because there's some white hairs, but it, it wouldn't even be a spot. So he's he's pretty much an all black kitty. So there you go. That's this group. They're all super friendly, super fun, uh, having a good time. Somebody's trying to go behind the litter box over there, maybe. So I put a temporary kitten litter box there, and we had one over here in this corner, but I moved it over by the big kid litter box because somebody was pooping over by the big kid litter box, which is perfect. So I put it over there. So now you guys know uh, where our litter boxes are at in this room, since people, I think, this morning were wondering... So that's everybody. We did it. We weighed some babies. We met all the kittens. I think you guys got a good chance to see their faces and their progress. At uh, one month old now. And yeah, if, if these guys have some, some uh, gains that are a little bit low right now, some of it might be the poops that they're having, which aren't necessarily well-formed, but aren't terrible either. I'm not worried about it. Um, 
And then some of it is just natural at this stage. Uh, mom's trying to wean them, and uh, I'm trying to encourage them to eat regular food. And th there's always the, either a slowdown or even sometimes a little bit of loss in weight at that point. Uh, funny enough, I've been trying that also. So these guys tend to, tend to seem like they take to it okay. Like they, they kind of are interested in food. They're definitely trying to learn to poop, you know, by themselves because I don't know if you realize, but mom cats, uh, kittens don't really poop or pee uh, on their own for the first month of their life in general. Um, most of the moms will take care of that where they just, they lick their bottoms and uh, they end up eating all of that stuff. That's a, one of the mom cat's jobs. Um, and Sky, uh, next door, Sky has been so diligent about that. I've, I've hardly seen any kind of poop in her room at all except for her own in the litter box. Um, and uh, Cuddles here is, is also diligent about it, but these kittens are now at the age where they want to go pooping uh, places and are. Uh, Sky's kids seem like they're just a little bit behind on that curve, so uh, they'll get it figured out, but right now uh, there's a lot of poops in here and not any at all to worry about in the other room, so that's good. I want to move this out of the way just a little bit. I need to rearrange this. It looks so plain in here on the camera because we're looking at this wall. It's just a big blank wall, um, which is fine by me, but I got to find a way to make it look a little more visually appealing for the stream. And there's so many things in this room. I mean, it's full of toys and stuff, but uh, you don't necessarily see cat trees even. You don't necessarily see all of that uh, from where I've got the cameras right now. I got to work on it a little bit. All right, quick quiz, who's that? Anybody? Anybody know which kitten this is? It's testing. All right, yep, if you said cashmere like Jamestown, you're right. That's the one, that's cashmere the boy. Good job. What are you thinking, Cash? What are you thinking? Here. I like these crinkle balls for kittens because if you crush them and then you set them down, they make noises as they sort of decompress. Like a bowl of Rice Krispies. It, it tends to get the kitten's attention pretty well. take the tripod off now. Hang on. This is one of my favorite things is watching them sort of learn to interact with things. It's real funny seeing them at this age where they, they can't necessarily judge distances too well. They're getting better at it every day though. And for cats that are so focused on prey, you know, uh, it's amazing to me how long it takes kittens to be able to track objects um, that are moving because if I throw a ball they almost always lose where it went they're like I don't I don't know where to go where did it go um, even if I real deliberate to make them you know like watch me doing it they still have some trouble and that that's usually something that takes months for them to really get down and you'd think it would be one of those things that was just super programmed into to cats and kittens considering how they work That's why I like a toy that makes noises for them like that when I crush it, because the noises, that'll keep them focused on it. That's also, when I have a cat that plays fetch, um, uh, like um, uh, Brain Turn On, um, the Cal's kid that was such a big fetcher, uh, when, when I have a cat, or Loganberry for that matter, when I have one that plays fetch, especially when they're first learn Drizzle, thank you, Drizzle. Uh, it was Drizzle I'm thinking of, not one of Cal's kids. Um, that's correct. Um, when, uh, when I have a kitten especially that is playing fetch, when they're first sort of learning to, 
I always want to either use a toy that makes noise or uh, use, uh, throw it at something so that it will make a noise when it lands, you know, like a hardwood floor or at the wall so that it makes just enough of a noise to get them focused and, and running towards it. Otherwise, they, they usually can't figure out where it went. Um, so uh, that's, that's very important at this age. And then for older cats like Logan, he, he's great that way. He can track stuff pretty well. He'll still lose it once in a while if, if it's not, you know, if he, if he has no idea if you throw it when he's not looking, just forget it, and then it's just gone. But, uh, yeah. That's my advice. Uh, if a kitten ever brings you a toy, throw it, and uh, that's, that's the first sign of a cat that'll play fetch if, it, if it brings you toys, if it brings you stuff and sets it, sets it near you. Uh, that's definitely a quality that means they will play fetch. But when you then to turn it into fetch, you've got to throw it. You've got to throw it in a way that they, they see it or know where it went and can go after it. And then if they bring it back, uh, just keep that going. You've got to fetch her. That's the way it works. Very easy. All right. I've got a whole bunch of stuff to get done today. I'm I, putting it off. This is, this is all... One of the ways I'm trying to procrastinate, uh, but I really got to get to it. So thank you guys so much for joining me this morning. And uh, hopefully, even if you can't adopt Calendar and her kittens, uh, Monkey and uh, Holly, um, hopefully you know somebody who can and will turn them on to us and uh, point them at the kitten.academy website. I know the application there is daunting, but I know these kittens are well worth it. So uh, there you go. I call him Monkey on purpose, Jamestown. I want, I want to point that out. Monkey is his nickname for me. Um, that's, not, that's not a mistake. <laughs> I just Because I, I make the mistake so much. I just want to be uh, clear. So yes, his name is Monday, though. That's correct. And Holly's name is Holiday. What are you saying in there, Cash? He, he, did you hear him squeak and then Mom immediately answered with her little brrrr? She really is learning to talk quite a bit. Oh, we got flappy ears. That's not a flappy ear, that's just an itchy ear. The other two were flapping their ears for a second. I hope you saw it. All right, everybody have a good one.